Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. Yeah, bless your name. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Because you hold tomorrow. You know all about our tomorrow. But we thank you for today. And we thank you for tomorrow. We ask, Lord, that you would strengthen me in my thoughts. And so what to say and how to say. Thank you for our leadership, our presiding bishop and the entire leadership of this church. Thank you for the Church of God in Christ, a church that has been a blessing to my soul. Lord, we pray now that you would direct my thoughts as to what to say and how to say. There be anyone in the building, oh God, that need a special blessing, and I'm sure there are many. I ask the Lord that you would please bless them. There are many, Lord, that desire to be here tonight, and they're not here because of sickness in their body, various circumstances. But Lord, you know where they are, you know who they are, and I pray that you would touch them right now. A blessing of healing for my sister, Odell Walker. A blessing of healing for Bishop Frank O. White and Dr. Juliet White. And all of the saints, God, and all of the people of God that may be sick in their bodies and desire to be here, but they're not here. But Lord, you are there where they are. And I realize that you are a master doctor. You're the chief of staff. And I ask for your healing power to saturate the atmosphere and let these people be blessed. And if there's anyone in this building that need a healing touch from you, I know that you're able to do it, Lord. And as I stand before your people, I ask for guidance of thoughts as to what to say, how to say, and then give your people receptive hearts. And if you do it for us, Lord, we'll give you all the glory, the honor, the praise is all day they belong to to God you may be seated they belong to God they The praise is all day, they belong to, to God. Oh, I love you, Lord, oh yes, yes I love you, Lord, for your goodness, your mercy. Your peace and your joy, God's I love you, Lord. Now let us praise His name. Let us praise His name in the morning, the noonday, the evening. Let's praise the Lord for all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise belong to God. I give him true praise tonight for blessing me to be able to stand before your people in this wonderful Women's International Convention one more time. We don't know about tomorrow. We just live from day to day. And I'm grateful to the Lord for sparing my life to stand before you one more time. I want to give high respect to our presiding bishop, Bishop Charles E. Blake, a man of God, and we praise the Lord for his love and his concern. Thank God for all the blessing that he's bestowed upon him. And certainly to the second presiding bishop, or first rather, a man with much energy. I came into the airport the other day and 
looked up and who come walking down through that whatever they have there down in that little, what do you call it? Walk through that long ways from the front out to my gate to meet me. And I thought, Lord, who is that? What is it? Bishop, you shouldn't be walking down here. And Mother Brooks was right with him. I appreciate that so much. Bishop Macklin, our second vice, and these fathers of the gospel, Pastor, not Pastor, but Bishop McKinney, as a father, I got a lot more little fathers there, but all of the members of the general board, God bless each of you. The executive men that serve in this church, the secretary, the chairman of the board, uh, the chairman of the board of bishops, number one, Bishop J. J I want to give Brother Sh Shared, not Drew Shared, but John Shared, father who heads the board of bishops, and to all of the bishops, all of the men who hold whatever national office you hold, I give you praise tonight. And thank you for being here. I'm thankful for my bishop. Is he here? Is he anywhere around? Yeah, my bishop, Bishop Johnny J. Johnson. An humble man, but a real serious man when it comes to the gospel. And he's been my bishop all the years I've been saved. And that's about 60 some years. To serve as his church mother, starting off when I was about 20 years old. And he's a man of God that we love and respect. And from South Carolina, we have a little better than 100, around 100 delegates to come with us. And we praise the Lord for that. All of you God's people, all of the great men of God, it'll be all night if I try to call everybody by name, but you know I love you, and I appreciate you being here. And these lovely wives, the wives of these bishops, one by one and name by name, thank you so much. The executive staff of women, beginning with my assistant mother, Barbara McCool Lewis, and let me step back to my darling, Mother Mae Blake. You know, her name is May, my name is May. So we hit it off real good. We have nice friends. Love Mother Blake. Like to sit by, like to hear her words of conversation and encouragement. And all these bishops' wives, they're beautiful, they're kind to me, every one of them. Mother Louise Patterson is always special in the hearts of the women of the Church of God in Christ. She's one of our former presiding bishop's wife. And all of you, the Lord's people that are here, you know, and all that I see, all these wonderful mothers and women, I wish I could call you all by name, but you know I love you much, because there's somebody over there named Willie May, like me. Willie May, are you here? I think we got another Willie May over there. That's the mother shared, Willie May. God bless you. I understand that Mother uh, Wynum is here my sister in the Lord, my friend. Yeah, we love Mother Wynum. Thank you so much for being here. We're going to have to get together and, and get that tape made that we're supposed to make. And all of you, the Lord's people, it's good to be here. Bishop, I'm blessed to have, I'm a mother of 10 daughters. I had two sons. And I'm blessed to have all 10 of my daughters here tonight. If I could just get them to stand, I know they don't want to, but if I can get all of my daughters to stand. Thank you. I have sons here, grandsons. All of you stand, hurry up, stand, everybody. Everybody who's related to me, stand up. Amen. Got them here, granddaughters. and grandsons and bishop they're all workers in the church i don't do anything in my house at all but church work i have an office extended in my home and that's all i do they cook they wash they clean they see about me they do everything to help me do the work of the lord and i appreciate them 
so very much. Had not the Lord given me a great family, I don't know whether I could do what I'm doing or not, but they are a blessing to me. Many of them are retired from jobs and back home just doing everything for me. So I'm just thankful for that. All of the blessing people of the Lord. Women of God, we had a wonderful time today in our leadership conference. And I think we had about a bigger crowd as we normally, bigger than normal. But the ladies were there, Bishop, listening and we're striving to give them direction to follow your direction and the direction of the church. I love this church and you gave us a wonderful theme so we piggyback on your, the theme that you've given to the general church and our focus from that tonight is holy women taking this violent and immoral world by force. And we talk to the women today concerning our responsibility. And one of our main assignment is prayer. We started off on Sunday night. I don't know how many that room, what was the capacity there, but we know we had a full room of women and men, elders also, a few of them. And we prayed from 11 o'clock Sunday night until 8 o'clock Monday morning, asking the Lord to bless this convention and all the other needs that we have. We're asking the Lord to smile on us and bless us, not only us as individuals, but in the world at large, the community in which we live. We ask the Lord to please help us because we need the help of the Lord. And so we challenge the women of God today, and I think we all agree to the fact that we're going to join force together and do what we can as women of the Church of God in Christ to take this violent and immoral world by force, and we're going to do what the Word gives us to do, and that is to pray, seek His face, and pray, and ask God to turn this world around for us because it is, a, it, it is in a critical condition right now. Talking about it is not going to do it, but I know prayer changes things. I said prayer changes things. Not only things, he changed people, he changed circumstances, and so we ask of the women of God to let's go back to our foundation, our base, because our first assignment was to pray and if we pray then God will bless us and we feel that he will answer to our prayers and give us the strength to endure what's going on in our world today and so we looked at the scripture two of them one in the book of St. Matthews chapter 11 verse 12 and 1 Timothy 6, chapter 12 through the 16th verses. And the first says, And from the day of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffer violence, and the violent take it by force. And then Timothy says, Fight! the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things and before Christ Jesus who before Pontius Pilate witness a good confession that thou keep this commandment for without spot unbreakable until the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ which in his time he shall sure how is the blessed and only 
expert penitent and king of kings and lord of lords who only has immorality dwelling in the light on man can approach unto whom no man has seen nor can see in whom be honored and power uh, everlasting and it says amen in times like these the world in which we live the things that are happening we the women of god i challenge you i ask you i encourage you to let us join force together and take heed to the call of jah of god in Jeremiah 9 and 17. The word of the Lord said, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider ye and call for the mourning women, that they may come, and send for the cunning women, that they may come. You ask, what kind of righteous, what can the righteous do? If the righteous would obey the word of God, follow the direction, even of the Church of God in Christ foundation, we will have the strength and power to fight and win. We don't need to fight expecting to lose, but you must fight expecting to win. We are in a spiritual warfare that can only be fought with spiritual tools. Number one is prayer, concentration, and consecration. Uniting ourselves as an army, a strong force, and go to God and ask him to help us. There's a song that said, ask the Savior to help you, to comfort, to strengthen, and to keep you. And the song say, He's willing, not only is he willing, but he's able. He is the only one that's able to help us right now. And so let's consecrate ourselves, ladies of the Lord, uniting our force together, drawing closer and closer together, and asking God for his help. And somebody say his ears is not heavy, that he can't hear you. And the old time he sang, my God is listening all day long to hear your cry. Sometimes it seems as though he's not listening to you. But Mother Patterson said there's on one occasion using the, the telephone years ago who had party line as an example and she said, sometimes God puts us on hold. We've been praying for God to help us with one thing and another, family matters, community matters, whatever it is, and look like God is not listening. But she said, if God puts you on hold, don't hang up. Hold on. I experienced the party line. Sometimes you want to get through, but another party is on the line. But my God will hear you if you have the patience to wait on him. We need to take a retrospective view of the women department structure. First, Mother Lizzie Robinson, after being appointed by our founder, Bishop Mason, she began this ministry with a strong army of prayer warriors praying for the condition and for the blessing of the Lord. How many of you know prayer changes things? How many of you know prayer changes people? Prayer changes circumstances. So I stand before you tonight challenging the women of the Church of God in Christ. Let's go back to our main foundation, our basic. Our ministry began with prayer and the Bible. Now, we have dressed it up with a lot of things in this day and time. 
But the main ingredient is prayer and the word. And you mix it together and hold on by faith, God will answer our prayer. How many of you expect God to answer your prayer? Thank you, Lord. So let us cry out to God. First of all, let us unify ourselves. You know, the devil comes in and wants you to think that you're the only paddle on the beach. And you're the only one can get a prayer through. But when all of God's people get together, I said when all of the women get together and begin to pray and seek God, God will hear us. So I'm challenging the women to go back to your various place of labor and let's pick up the old landmark strategy. And let's call our women together and let's pray and let's seek God and ask him to help us. And you don't have to have a whole lot of fancy words to pray because he knows the heart. And when you get in real trouble and you say to him, Lord, help me. Lord, help us. Help us in our home when we see what's happening there. In our community when we see the devil is almost taken over. If we all get together and begin to cry out to the Lord, Lord, help me. Help my family. Help my children. Help my community. I don't know about where you are, but Goose Creek used to be a very calm place because at one point there was only us there. But we got everybody coming in, almost packing out. And things are happening now that makes you tense at all times. But we trust in God. And we tell God, God, you know our need. You know, the fancy prayer, we don't have to pray no fancy prayer. Just let them know, Lord, you know my need. You know I need you here. I need your protection. I need your direction. I need you to take over my children, my grandchildren. Because you know what? It's not, they're not safe anywhere. It used to be they get way out somewhere in danger spot, but they're in danger in the school. They're danger in your neighborhood. And so now you've really got to pray and ask God to help you. So I'm calling the women of God, the saints of God, to let us get together and get ourselves dressed for the fight. We got to put on our war clothes. We got to get the right tool in our hand and let the Lord know, use me, Lord, and fight with all of your life. We must unite our foes, and that's one area the devil don't want us to unite. He wants us to separate and find and fault with each other and can't get along. Same church, same district, same jurisdiction, but divided. But somebody said, together we stand. Divided we fall. So I'm challenging you today as women of God Put away little childish things and let's bond together and do the work of the Lord. What we need now is a mighty concert of prayer in our homes. First of all, in our hearts, in our home, and in our churches. And I don't know about everywhere, but I know the prayer, the prayer band is sort of fading out a little bit. And we have fancy prayer now. You know, we stand up and start off with fancy words to the Lord. The Lord don't care about your words. Just say, Lord, help me. Now, blessed Heavenly Father, I stand before you and you know who I am. Yes, he know who you are. You don't have to tell him all of that. I'm glad I learned to call Jesus because he is our deliverer. He has the power, and he's provided the power for us if we humble ourselves and seek his face. Oh, my. I didn't understand 
The old time is when they made us stay on our knees at the altar and cry out to God and pray. And we think we got it all together and about to get up. And those mothers say, baby, you did well tonight. Come back tomorrow night. Pray some more. But in many cases now, the altar, don't, we don't even touch the altar. Many places our church is so fancy, we don't have a place for them to kneel. But if we humble ourselves, I'm finding out it's not enough to walk up and have somebody to tap you in your forehead, and then you go back because you ain't got it that way. I'm glad they made me call Jesus. 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 And those old mothers said, call him a little faster. Call him a little louder. I said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sometimes I say in my heart, Lord, take me back. Take me back to the old way. I love to hear the mothers moan. Thank you, Lord. If we're going to win this war, we're going to have to go back to moaning. Got to go back and say, Lord, you know. I don't know everything that's going on. But when I watch the television and go to the internet, my heart is heavy. Because I see a whole lot of mess there. Mess that we shouldn't be watching ourselves. And certain things I don't even want on my television. Because it's contaminating our minds and the children's mind. And that's why things are going crazy in the school. They're fighting and going on in school now. But God, I say God, he's ready to help us. And the song say, ask the Savior to help you. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. Somebody say he's able. I say he's able. Other things going down and other things get weak. But my God, he's a strong God. He's a powerful God. He's able to turn this world around. But he needs some praying women, some calling women, cunning women to call on Jesus. There's nothing wrong with calling his name. I love to call his name. Jesus, save my children. Jesus, help my community. Jesus, look on our nation. Jesus, make a way for me. Jesus, help me to go back to fasting. Help me to go back to praying. Hallelujah. We need a mighty concert of prayer. We need prayer from the heart. Prayer in our homes. Prayer when we get to church. I don't know about you, but many places in our churches now, we don't have kneeling prayer. We don't have kneeling prayer. We have revivals, and nobody get on their knees. Everybody walk up and put a little oil on their forehead and send them back to their seat. Oh, God, but I'm glad I came when I did. I'm glad they made me call Jesus. My fine, nice ballerina skirt, I didn't intend to get on no dusty floor. But when they told me to call Jesus, I call him, I call him. And the more I call him, the more the mothers tell me to call him. Come on, baby, call him. Come on, baby, call him. Just say, Jesus, give up, give up. I'm glad I got it back then. Because that power is still moving on the inside. That power give me to know I got to love in spite of. I've got to walk upright regardless to the circumstance. We need Jesus to help us. And as we gather in this holy women convention, we talk to the ladies today in our leadership conference. There's no time now for separation. There's no time for funny stuff. I don't like you and you don't like me and we all say we got the Holy Ghost. But when you love one another, you can work together.
when you love one another, the church can grow. And when you love one another, the joy of the Lord fill the atmosphere. And the power of the Lord comes down. And all you in here, bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. I wish I could bring back those days. There's a great, great need for us to review our history and go back and look where we came from and see where the Lord has brought us and then make it in our mind that we're going to go back. As saints of God, we must take uh, uh, this world by force. We must go back to praying. That's the only way we're going to help the world in which we live. We need a mighty concert of prayer. Oh, sometimes we come to church and we get together and stand up and do a little quick prayer, but a morning prayer. When you get it from your gut, you say, God, help me. Lord, save me. Lord, turn me around. Lord, I don't think like I used to. You must have a personal contact with the Lord. The word of the song said, don't forget the family prayer. As Jesus promised to meet you there. Often we talk about this bad world and, you know, we gave our opinion over what's going on. But God can change this nation. I say God can change this nation. If my people, which are called by my name, if they will humble themselves, seek my face, and turn. Somebody say turn. To turn. Turn away from jealousy. Turn away from envy. Turn away from strife. Turn away from junk. Get on your knees and let's call on the man who can help us. Anybody know his name? Anybody know his name? Power. Power. It's in the name of Jesus. Deliverance. It's in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We must know that the battle is not ours alone. But when Jesus steps in, he can take over and do what needs to be done. He's standing by. He's ready to help us. Oh, yes, I, I love those old hymns. I say, I love those old hymns that said, just tell Jesus. Tell him all. Trials great and trials small. He will share them and freely bear them. If you just tell Jesus, tell him all. Oh, how sweet it is to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise. Just to know thus said the Lord. It's a wonderful thing to know him and feel his presence with you. Way late in the night, turn that one-eyed monster off, watching all that stuff on television and go to sleep with it in your heart. But just turn it off and go to sleep calling on Jesus. Go to sleep praising him. Go to sleep thanking him. And I tell you what, you have sweet dreams. So you'll have sweet dreams. And when you wake up in the morning, you don't have to be cranky. Hallelujah. You got to be careful how you go to bed anyway. Because you don't know whether you're going to wake up. But I heard Mr. Wilson say, if I don't wake up in the morning, if I don't wake up in the morning, if I don't wake up in the morning, It's going to be all right If you're talking about Jesus If you're talking about Jesus If you're talking about Jesus I want you to know That he's a friend Of mine We don't have no time to waste Ladies, let's get on the battlefield Hallelujah 
Let's stay there until things change. I said, stay there until things change. Somebody said, stay until the war is ended. Ah, oh, Mother Josephine Jones used to tell us, stay in the field. Stay in the field. Stay till the war is ended. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to soon stop. I beg of you, as women of God, let's join our force together. Take our eyes off the world and the worldliness that's in the world and get our eyes locked on Jesus and ask God to help us. Help us in our home. Help us in the church. Help us in our community. Our community is not as safe as it used to be. Down the road in Goose you can walk anywhere you want to, but you better not do that now because you don't know who you're walking up into. And I know if Goose Creek got that problem, some of these other places got some problem too. But it is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know thus says the Lord. He's a wonderful savior. And women of God, I want us to let's lock arm and heart together and pray and see God face and ask God to help us. I love my church. I say I love my church. And I get upset when anybody mess with my church. Thank you, Lord. It's time for us to do some building. We build our church with prayer and fasting. We build our church with a spirit of love. We build it with togetherness. Said to the ladies, I guess that one day I was talking about them. I said, I don't want to go back to the days when we were children and poor and had to get wood out of the woods to warm by in the fireplace. But some people, I witnessed this as a child, were too lazy to go in the woods and get some wood, Bishop. And all the houses then had board on the outside. And I would see them go there when they get real cold and the, the ice start falling. They would take a crowbar and go outside and rip the board off the house that they're living in to make fire. I said, uh-uh. I know that's too old for y'all to even understand. But I won't stay in a house and then rip it apart all the same time. Thank you, Lord. You got the bill. You got the man, you got to pray, you got to fix things. And if you get together and fix it, God will bless us. I don't want Dad Mason and all the bishops that went on and Mother Robinson and all of their labor to go in vain. I said to the Lord, Lord, I, I, I'm not much, I'm not much. I'm just a little short woman, you know, happy to be 90 years old. But I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to have war with the devil. I don't like him. He don't like me because he make good people bad. I said the devil make people who could be good people bad. But I, can't, I found out in my soul that if you really get Jesus on the inside and you get to commune with him on a daily basis, you go to bed thanking him. In the midnight you wake up, you thank him again. And then you get up early in the morning. And the first thing you do is have a talk with Jesus. And somebody said, let us have a little talk with Jesus and tell him. I said, tell him. Tell him all about our struggle. He'll hear our pain and cry. And he'll answer. Anybody know his answer? Anybody believe he'll answer? Well, let's call on his name. Come on, just a little while, call on his name. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, help us, Lord. Bless our church. Bless our family. Bless our community. Bless our world. We're calling on you. We're calling on you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I know you're here. I know you'll answer. Hear our cry. Bless our church. Bless our leaders. Bless our members. Bless our children. Bless us, Lord. Hallelujah. 
I tell you what, we don't have no time to lose now. No time to lose. We better get in the fight and fight for righteousness, fight for holiness. Think it was Bishop Bell saying we ain't giving up no ground. And that's who I have in my heart. I ain't giving up no ground. They try to remind me, you got to remember, you got to slow down because you're 90 years old. I ain't thinking about 90. Because I don't have no time to waste. I ain't giving up no ground. Because I've got a cause worth fighting for. And I already tell that devil, I ain't going to take no more. I want my unsaved loved ones saved. I want my church to be stronger. Hallelujah. I want my community to be safer. I want to see revivals break out. I don't mean just meeting. I'm talking about revival. Where souls will be crying out, what must I do to be saved? The Lord will give us the strength to do what we need to do. Church of God and Christ women, I beg you to let's get on bending knees and let's pray and ask God to help. He'll hear us. He don't ignore, he won't ignore you because you're a woman. He'll hear you because he have no gender. Amen. He'll hear you just as quick as he hear a male saint. Get it in your heart. Walking along, pray. Driving your car, praying. Just keep your hand on the steering wheel. And ask the Lord to help me. Come on, say, help me. Help me, Lord. Help me in my home. Help me in my community. Help me in my church. Help me, Lord. Give me love in my heart. Give me peace in my mind. Give me joy in my soul. And if you do it, Lord, I'll say thank you. Do we know how to say thank you? Do you want me to do anything for you? Just say, Lord, bless me. Lord, bless my home. Lord, bless my children. Bless my grandchildren. Bless my great-grandchildren. Bless me, Lord. Bless my church. Bless my pastor. Bless my bishop. Let's pray. And if you pray, God will answer your prayer. I love the Lord with all of my heart. I ain't finished, but I'll stop. I'm not through, but I will stop. But I want you to remember, if this world is going to be better, we're going to have to do better. Amen. Prayer meeting, fasting and praying and consecration is almost out of style. But oh God, I my soul rejoice when I saw the Lord moving in that prayer on Monday night. And I said, God, if we can just get prayer moving, if we can just take a month or two and let every church go in a prayer, fasting and prayer and ask God to help us, we will see the difference. I love the Lord with all of my heart and I know we have to get out here and we got to be back on tomorrow. But I say to you, do what you can. I'm challenging and the young women, uh, you'll get some challenge on Thursday because it's time out now for us to put a divider between old and young when we all need to be together. You need the old and the old needs you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, Bishop, we got it all lined up. We're going to bring the young and the old together on Thursday and we hope that they will bow to one another, that they'll bond together and help carry the work of the Lord on. Will you pray for me? Because I tell you what, I'm 90 years old and I don't even think about no age anymore. You know, I just feel like going. Just feel like doing what I can. And when the time run out, it just run out. But I want to be on the battlefield fighting. I say I want to be on the battlefield fighting. I want to go down a good soldier. Hallelujah. And I know if I stay on the battlefield till the end, there's a crown of life. Hey, I want my crown. And so I'll do all I can to please and to serve the Lord that is so good to me. 
He's so good to me. He healed my body. He delivered me from stress. I mean, I was about to lose my mind. I was on Valium, trying to hold it together, clenching my teeth. My temper hurt. I didn't know what was going on. But one day the Lord gave me to know that this is what's going on. You're, you're nervous. Your nerve is breaking. But God stepped in and made that nerve behave itself. And you know what? I don't worry about a whole lot of things. I mean, I pray about everything. But I don't worry about many things because I have a big God that's on my side. I say, I have a big God that's on my side. So I don't worry about that. I just work until the day is done. And I bless the Lord tonight for this night of service. And we pray that God will bless us on Friday night. Well, I talked to you tonight, but you're going to have some preaching tomorrow night. And you're going to have some preaching the next night. And then when Friday night comes, there's going to be a big bulldozer going to carry this convention to higher heights and send us home rejoicing. But our own presiding bishop is going to be preaching for us and giving us some direction. But you know, in my heart, I close by saying, thank you, Lord. I'm on the battlefield. For my Lord, yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, I promise him that I will turn him till I die.